Thanks for the support as a channel member and Chipman. Well, apparently we're only allowed to play German teams in the Champions League this year, which is a problem because there's one of them that's really, really, really good. And it's it's not the one we beat yesterday. Hello and welcome to Club 3, part 4 of non to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have both legs of our Champions League quarterfinal, sorry, not final, against Bayer Leverkusen, a team that have just beaten us in the league and effectively pushed us out of the title race. And they were very, very good in that match as well. We have also beaten Schalke and Kaiserslautern uh, since the last episode, which leaves us with, what is that, six games to go? It's a 34-game season, right? Six league games to go. And um, we're on 52 points, level on points with Leipzig, who are down in fifth place. We need to finish top four to get ourselves into the Champions League. And Champions League is a must. And um, with six games to go, being six points behind Leverkusen, we're not catching them. Bayern Munich probably will, because they always do. Uh, but we do now have to play Bayer Leverkusen across two legs in the Champions League as well. I am freshly wounded from them killing off my Bundesliga title hopes. They might be about to kill off my hopes of winning the Champions League as well, which looking at the Champions League draw is particularly upsetting because it looks like a very winnable Champions League. I suspect whoever wins the Liverpool-Barcelona quarterfinal is going to go on and win the entire tournament because the rest of us, I think most really top-tier teams would be quite happy to draw any of us. So, uh, yeah, that one, uh, I imagine they're both a little a little cheesed off that they're having to play each other this early. But you never know. We might be able to do something extraordinary. We did it in the last round when we knocked out Bayern Munich. Maybe we can do the same again against Bayer Leverkusen. The other piece of news is the next-gen list has been announced. I don't know if it's still in my inbox. Next, next gen? No, it's a little bit past it being in my inbox. I have scouted everybody on it. I haven't made any signings yet, um, but when the scout reports start to come in, I've got £79 million to spend on Wonder Kids and spend it on Wonder Kids. I shall. But let's go and play Leverkusen. Um, we're going to have to do it injury ravaged we are just picking up injuries left right and center Adi Emi is just recovering from injury Makoko is injured Gonzalez is injured he's out for four weeks Emil Smith Rowe uh, it's so extraordinary for this man to have picked up an injury I don't understand it it's so unrealistic um, but he's damaged his Achilles tendon and he's out for the rest of the season and I mean at 31 years old turns 32 this summer there's a chance he's played his last game for the club despite the fact he's been a great servant played very well for years um injury prone 32 year olds aren't really my jam um in more positive news kevin Deder, big kev is quite good six goals and an assist from his first seven starts 11 appearances in total 7.29 average rating very happy with him, but I think for a match like this, we need to get our really informed striker back for as much of the game as we can. Kerry Madiemi, who has been brilliant since I arrived. Um, he's another one who potentially might be moving on in the summer. Arsenal want him, and if they offer big money for a 30-year-old, we probably take that big money when we've got so many good young attacking players. But we really are having our strength in depth tested in these attacking areas. We're still good at the moment. We are having to play Bruno Herrera, who's on loan from Barcelona. And I, I mean, I haven't really used since I've been here because it didn't seem a lot of point in using a lone player when we had so many good players of our own um, but we are having to use him because we are getting a little light in that area but maybe we have enough about us to sneak but we didn't in the league they were much better than us in the league so this is our team for the first leg we are at home in the first leg against Leverkusen it's Ribeiro in goal a back four of Hartmann Schlotterbeck Garcia and Borches, Dudkic and Maui in midfield, Marrera, Carrier and Herrera, then supporting Adiemi up front. Must remember, Adiemi can only play an hour. We don't want to risk breaking him as he recovers from injury. He has been, even with Big Kev arriving, and as much as I love Big Kev, Adiemi has definitely been our best striker since I've been here. Um, I wouldn't say he's been our best attacker. Carrier is just on a, an absolutely different level. And there are a number of teams who are looking at him for the summer. He's still young. Um, he's he's excellent. He is. He's probably too good for us. He's the kind of player that Dortmund get in their late teens, early 20s, and then have to sell on to a big club. And I guess we're going to find out exactly where we stand as a club. 
based on how we cope with him in the summer. And there he is, scoring the opening goal inside the first 10 minutes. I mean, it looked like it just took a huge deflection. I think it was Maui with the shot from the edge of the area. Let's have a look at it from the other angle. Herrera doing good work on the right-hand side, pulls it across. It's cleared, but only as far as, as, far as Hartman, who plays it back to Maui. He hits it first time. It's hit Carrier on the back, and that is enough of a deflection to take it past the goalkeeper. They all count. That's added another 10 million to his fee. But... I think, as I was saying, based on what happens with him in the summer, it will give us a clue as to whether this is going to be our our end game club, our forever club, or if this is just another step on the adventure. Because if we uh, if we're forced into selling him because he wants to join a bigger club, I think we probably will be moving to join a bigger club at some point. Because I don't know. I feel like you're not really. A legend, and this is non-league to legend, you're not really a legend until you're managing one of those top-tier clubs that no one ever wants to leave because everyone wants to be there. And I don't know if Dortmund... Dortmund probably aren't currently. Can we turn them into one? Possibly, with the fan base. Will it happen quickly enough to keep carry out? I feel like I'm interviewing myself. Maybe. We'll find out this summer. Let's not worry about the summer for now. Let's worry about a ridiculous opportunity to get into a Champions League semi final. Borches on the right-hand side. He's got space to run into. Leverkusen seems to be playing very narrow and we're getting around the side of them repeatedly in these early early stages of the game. And Hartman, it's another shot from range that has bobbled around in the area and taken deflections. Leverkusen are going to feel very hard done by by what's happening here. Not my problem, is it? Goodness me. I... um. I mean, it's two very similar goals. Bobble, bobble, bobble. This time, the bobble leaves it on the toe of Marrera, who's able to just thwack it into the back of the net. But that was... Uh, I mean, I, yeah, I would I would be feeling pretty hard done by if I was Mr. Leverkusen at the moment. But a two-goal advantage. If we can hold on to this, if we can finish our first, first leg two goals up, you've got to believe it's possible. Carrier looking absolutely brilliant again there. Just gliding past his player and accelerating away from him. He is very, very, very good at football. And now Adiemi dropping deep, looking for options around him. Once again, we're dominating these wide areas. Borches with the cross. I mean, it's crying out for Big Kev to come on in these circumstances. We're getting into so many wide areas and creating so many chances that if we could get out there and just bombard the penalty area of crosses, he's just going to dominate. I don't understand what Leverkusen are doing differently compared to what they did in the league game. I mean, I can, in fact, I can see exactly what they're doing. They're playing very narrow. Inverted fullback, inverted wingback, two inside forwards. They are absolutely packing the middle of the pitch and letting us have the wide areas, which I guess when they have their moments of dominance and possession, they'll completely outnumber us in the middle and we'll have to cope with that. But at the moment, because we're the team with the momentum, the team in the ascendancy, they're just letting us have the wide areas and our best players are wingers. It seems like an absolutely bonkers decision for them to have made. Carrier, rare instance of him giving the ball away there in central midfield. And now Leverkusen with the shot from range. Ribeiro always had it covered, boys and girls. Twas never in doubt. And we are 2 0 up at half time and have to be jolly happy with that, if you ask me. Right, let's get into the dressing room, give everybody the necessary pat on the head. 2-0 traditionally has always been the danger scoreline in Football Manager because you've got to do the not get complacent thing. I'm actually going to take off Adiemi at half time because he was only going to be able to do another 15 minutes anyway. And I just think that Big Kev, this game is made for Big Kev to get on the end of those crosses. And before Leverkusen change anything and maybe decide to keep a few of their players wider and stop the procession of crosses coming in, I want to have the big boy in there ready to get on the end of the crosses. Here we are once again with the cross. There's Big Kev. There's another goal. It's 3-0. This was not in the script for today. Leverkusen will have absolutely no idea what's hit them. We looked so much worse than them in the league game that we played recently. But for whatever reason, here in the Champions League, we've decided that we're just going to thrash them. And it's it's absolutely baffling. It, it's likely it's going to be a different story when we come back to their, their pace. I mean, that's why we're getting so much space. That's their right back there, Frimpong, basically playing in central midfield, which 
I mean, it's great if you're attacking and having lots of fun, but we're just getting in behind them constantly and getting into these wide areas. Big Kev comes short, plays it back to Schlotterbeck, and once again, we've got so many players much wider than any of the players. I'm, I'm, I'm calling this tactical genius on my part. The fact is we've not done anything different to what I've done in the last 100 matches I've managed, but today it's working. And it does make me a little bit frustrated about how the league game against them went. They might, I'll have to look back. They must have done something different tactically because we certainly didn't. Big Kev's in again. And the half-time substitution is a masterstroke. Although, I think this one might be about to be ruled out. If we go 4-0 up here, we're in the semi-final. There's no coming back from this for Leverkusen. And it has been awarded 4-0 now. What a quarter-final. And like I say, it looks like a winnable Champions League. That's the really exciting thing. Big Kev wasn't even looking there. He is he is the complete package at centre forward. He is he's everything I've ever wanted. He's wonderful. And we're 4-0 up. And my word, I I mean, I didn't I wasn't prepared for this today. This isn't what I expected to be talking about in this episode. I was expecting we were going to be wrapping up this season almost because we would have lost our title hopes and our Champions League hopes all in the space of like a week. But it looks like hope might still be alive around these parts, boys and girls. We have been sensational. I'm dropping praise. I never drop praise. If we now go and concede two goals, that's your lesson for today. Don't ever drop praise. But we've played so well. And now Dukic wins the ball back. Our all-time record signing plays it out to Herrera, who's got all the space he could ever want. And now Dukic back to Borches, Maui into Herrera again. That's a penalty kick. And we've got the opportunity to go 5-0 up. And Big Kev should be on this penalty and has the opportunity to have a hat-trick earlier in the match than he should have even come on if I'd have been following the rules the physio gave me. But here is Big Kev from the penalty spot. It's a 15-minute hat-trick for Kevin Dedder. What a, what a substitute appearance that has turned into. None of them with his head either. But we are now 5-0 up. I mean, the keeper the keeper dives past where the ball goes. Big Kev's just hit it really hard. It's all he needed to do. And we have absolutely ruined him. We're, we're at it again. Corner. This time, Marrera tries to drive it in low, which seems like a strange decision when we've got so many big boys in our team. But Dukic, now back to, uh, now back to whoever that was back to. Garcia, I think it was. Herrera's played really, really well. Herrera's in again. And now Carrier, and that's 6-0. And it's getting absurd. The linesman's flag is up. I mean... It's cl For me, it, it's close if he's off because it didn't look offside on first glance. It has been disallowed. This is where we see him eight yards offside. Let's have a little look from the uh, from the replay. And no, it, that is close. I mean, he is off, but it's close. But five, we're, we're, we're still happy with 5-0. We take this. <laughs> this is okay. We would have taken this before the match. Their solution is they've gone to a, f a false nine up front. They're just trying to pack. They've got like eight central midfielders on the pitch. I don't think they understand how to counter what we're doing, which seems quite unfortunate on their part. We're making a couple of substitutions just to, just to keep the key areas nice and fresh. But yeah, they're basically... I mean, it is eight central midfielders they've effectively got on there now. And now they've lost a player to injury after they'd already made their five substitutions. So they're now down to 10 men as well. I mean, we should be really going in for the kill now. I don't think we've got the players on the bench to do it because we're so depleted. But go at them. We're bringing on Hassan Begovic. We're bringing on Ozil just to try and keep our uh, our top tier guys fresh. They're just moving this guy around all over the place because they don't know what to do with him. I didn't even know you could play a round oiter as an attacking midfielder. I don't think that's actually the role he's playing. So I think that's a wide area. Hassan Begovic, two Urzel. I thought we were going to have two more substitutions combined for a lovely goal. Um, but it looks like it is going to end 5-0 in this first leg. He has no idea what role he's supposed to be playing. He's just he's just lost it. We've won 5 0 there against the best team in Germany. The one downside to what's just happened is we've probably knocked the stuffing out of Leverkusen there and just opened the door for Bayern Munich to go and win the league again. Which I mean, if Bayern have to win the league in order for us to win the Champions League, then I guess I take it. But that is that was a huge result. Right, we are now going to go and play Bayern in the league. 
I'm not going to show you that because the, the Bundesliga title title challenge is dead and we'll show you the second leg against Bayer Leverkusen, which, I mean, oh, he says that. We're not going to balls that. Shall I show you Bayern? Because if we beat them, it's maybe not dead after what we've just done to Leverkusen. You know what? We're calling an audible. We're going to assume we don't lose 6-0 in the second leg against Bayer Leverkusen, which is a very confident thing to assume. And I'm going to show you Bayern Munich as the second match in this episode. Because if we beat them and Leverkusen go and lose because they've just had their confidence knocked out of them, we are right back in a title race that we thought we were out of. It's a big if, but it'd be a shame for you to miss it if it happens, wouldn't it? Well, Leverkusen didn't win. They scraped to a 1-0 win, so the... Uh, the dream we had of them collapsing is maybe not going to work out the way I hoped it would. But let's try beat Bayern Munich. Munich get you back. Bayern Munich, anyway. That's I think that's their name. Van Veen comes in at left back. Big Kev, of course, comes in to start up front after that performance that he had in the Champions League game. I will show you the result of the second leg before the end of the episode as well. So don't go anywhere, boys and guys. I feel like I'm on TikTok. Don't go anywhere. I'll show you at the end. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, obviously, you'll, you're going to want to know how that turns out. And in the off chance that it does start to go wrong, you will still get to see it go wrong. I'll make sure the suit is on and the camera is rolling. It would be unfair to do this any other way. Oh, I remember that Siroli guy is brilliant for them. We've played, This is the fourth time this season we've played Bayern Munich. I, I don't want to tempt fate too much. We've not actually lost to them yet. So I feel I feel like we've got an opportunity here. But it's probably not an opportunity to win the Bundesliga. However, we do need to keep a very close eye on Leipzig, who are chasing us from behind and can't really afford a, a defeat and letting them in because the last thing we want to do, we've shown we can compete in the Champions League this year, the last thing we want to do is not qualify for it. Although I guess if we go and win the whole thing, obviously we'll qualify for it that way. So that'd be nice. <laughs> That'd be nice, wouldn't it? What a weird way to uh, get back in the Champions League that would be for us in our first season here in Germany. Right, Ribeiro plays it to Garcia. And now Schlotterbeck looking for options ahead of him. Plays it. I mean, it's a poor pass. And João Neves collects for Bayern Munich. João Neves, a player I've signed in multiple saves this year. He is excellent. And it's quite... Quite demoralising to see him in this Bayern Munich team with Foden and various others. This is a wonderful counter-attack from us. If we can just move these final couple of passes. Herrera, I feel like I might have been wrong to write him off as a loan because he's been great. I know we don't really need any more wingers, but we have got a load of money to spend. If there's a way to make Herrera permanent, just in these couple of matches I've seen him in now, he's brilliant. What a pass that was, by the way. What a pass. Was that Maui? That was an incredible pass. And what a great finish from Marrera. Our wing our wingers are just something else. But this was a this was a phenomenal pass. Schlotterbeck to Van Veen. Just first time Maui threads it through the eye of the needle. And Marrera is there to put us 1-0 up. What does that do to the league table? I can't do the Kev maths all on my own, um, but that's what the league table would look like with five games to go. We're still very much not in a title race, but importantly, if we can beat Bayern here, we're stopping them winning the league because they're not catching Leverkusen either. And that's uh, that, that feels like the first step towards becoming the dominant team in Germany. Take a... Take a Take a, a shot at Bayern. Stop them winning the league for the first time in 18 years. Having already knocked them out of the Champions League, we're properly reconfirming themselves, ourselves as major rivals of theirs. You know, none of this, oh, we're, we're, just, we're miles away as the second best team. No, we are. We're up there. We're winning things. We're, we're going to be a thorn in your side, Bayern Munich. Um I don't actually know who's managing Bayern Munich. I need to work out who my rival is, who my enemy is. I know Mikel Arteta's managing Bayer Leverkusen. And so, should we have a look? Who's at Bayern Munich? Bayern Munich is Nagelsmann. So, he's just been there forever then. I guess he would because he's just keeps winning the league, I guess. In fact, no, he hasn't been there forever. I thought he would have been there to start the save. I guess he wasn't. I mean, this doesn't happen. So he was sacked by Bayern Munich, briefly became Germany manager, then was Newcastle manager for a very brief period, and then went back to Bayern Munich eight years ago. 
How long was he at Newcastle for? Okay, he wasn't even sacked at Newcastle. So, I mean, there's no mention on there of him being Germany manager. So, he left Bayern, was sacked by Bayern, wasn't he? Was sacked by Bayern. Newcastle hired him in January 2024. Summer 2024, he just resigned and went back to Bayern a year after they sacked him. That's bonkers. Is he still Germany manager as well? No, no. I don't understand. Because it says that he's Germany manager and he's not Germany manager. Who's this guy? This guy's the Germany. I don't understand. I'm not going to try and understand. Is he a coach? Is he in the coaching setup for Germany? Because that's mad if he is. No, don't even try and understand it. Well, Let's try and win the league, shall we? What am I saying? We're not going to win the league. Let's try and win the football match. Winning the football match is enough. Oh, good. I need a sip of my coffee. That's it. I've not had enough coffee today. Yes, I'm drinking out of a mug with my own face on. Is that a problem? It shouldn't be a problem. I mean, at this point, unless you're brand new today, in which case, welcome to the channel. Don't forget to subscribe. But unless you're brand new, would you expect anything less than me to drink out of a mug with my own face on? Oh, what a save from Ribeiro. It wasn't a save. It was he hit the post. I'm trying to justify the fact that we've signed Ribeiro, and I'm probably looking at signing another goalkeeper again in the summer because I don't know that he's good enough. But maybe he is good enough because that was a really good save. Um, right, Big Kev hasn't played well today against his former club. Adi Emi can come on, um, and then we're also going to change some of these wide players. Makoko's fit enough to come on again now, and we will put Maui further forward and bring on Martel to play in there. And that all seems to work for me. Get another opportunity for Makoko to show me that he's any good. I mean, I'm not sure I've got them the right way around. There's an argument for Adiemi out wide and Makoko up front, probably. It's probably closer to what their natural positions would be. But Adiemi has definitely been the better of the two for me this season. So I think we'll leave them that way around for today. We are running out of players. Hasan Begovic is going to come on and we'll bring Nesid on as well in midfield. And we really are down to the bare bones on this squad. We are starting to look at some of the wonder kids from the next gen list. So there is going to be new signings to show you in the next episode, whether that ends up being a Champions League semi-final or the last couple of games of the Bundesliga season. But it looks like we are ruining Bayern's title hopes. And I guess... Keeping ourselves in the hunt. Imagine if we'd have beaten Leverkusen. We're six points behind them with five games to go. It's very, very, very unlikely. But I have done very, very unlikely league wins before. But before I get too ahead of myself, let's go and rubber stamp our semi-final spot. I'll meet you at some point during the second half of that game when hopefully we won't be losing. And we've just gone 1-0 up in the second leg, which means we're 6-0 up on aggregate with less than 10 minutes to go. And I think at this point we can safely say we've made it through to the semi-final of the Champions League, which of course means tomorrow's episode will be the semi-final of the Champions League. I'm not sure who we're going to play. I'm not sure what side of the draw we're on. I think the draw has already happened. So in reality, we would know, but I didn't pay too much attention because I assumed we were getting knocked out. Are we on the same side as the other game being played tonight? In which case, it's Ajax and Milan. I don't actually know who is uh, who is winning that one after, uh, after the first leg. Let's just make our last couple of substitutions as well. Dukic as yet another player who's picked up an injury. Just got injuries all over the place. It's absurd. We need to stop getting injured, you silly boys. Um, but it looks like we are going to have a last opportunity. No, I was going to say a last opportunity to score a goal. I mean, it's been, it's been a very, very quiet second leg. We've just completely cancelled each other out. Um, if they had a, I thought that guy was called Jasso Red and he'd been given a red card. He's not. That was saying that that guy called Jasso had been given a red card. I've played the game before, I promise. Right. Do we know who we're playing? Ajax. I mean... That feels like a winnable semi-final. And then it's Barcelona against Inter on the other side. 
Champions League semi-final coming up tomorrow. Did not expect this this season. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.